You're listening to The Observing Eye. Pirate Radio for the Mind. Coming at you fresh from the computer hell cabin. Hello, you beautiful lot. It's Friday, the 31st of March, and this is episode 12 of The Observing Eye. How are we all doing? Let's have our regular check-in. What's been good this week? Let's have a moment to reminisce, to be mindful of the good things. And let's take a moment to contemplate and consider those things that have not been so great this past week. This week, I am going slightly off on a tangent. We are going to be talking about the importance of art in our well-being. Now, you may initially think, if you're not particularly into art, like, what am I going to get out of watching or looking at a triptych of three urinals, for example. Well, you know, I get that. I This episode was inspired by a trip I took to the Tate Modern in London on Tuesday of this week. And uh, I like the Tate Modern. I think it's got some really interesting stuff in it. There was the urinal by Marcel, I think it was, that is quite literally a piss take um, of modern art. But there was a, a really interesting exhibition, which was the purpose of, of us going, uh, by a Japanese artist. And I hope I don't butcher the name here. But the, the artist was called Yayoi Kusama, and the exhibition was Infinity Mirror Rooms. Uh, my only regret is that there weren't more Infinity Mirror Rooms they were absolutely uh, mind-blowing uh, in the sense that uh, you step into these rooms and one of them had a chandelier hanging in the center. But the way that the room, and they're only small, uh, small rooms, uh, the way that the room had been set up with the mirrors was that whatever direction you looked, you gazed off into infinity. And the light um, in both of the rooms was uh, was really pivotal in creating that effect. And it was absolutely fantastic. It's a real experience of getting out of your own head, you know, without filling, in, filling yourself full of psychedelics and mushrooms and things like that. But I think art is, is incredibly important to change our perspective or revisit our perspective and to induce a sense of otherliness and catharsis. It gets us out of the normal. It gets us out of the mundane and into a very, very different headspace. Art is, a, is an incredible way of communicating in the sense that we are obviously not using words, but we're conveying and evoking emotions and ideas through expression of imagery or sound. And I think that that is an incredibly powerful way of transmitting, of, of elucidating a feeling transferring a feeling and a set of emotions from one individual to another through artistic expression. And in that, there is a great aspect of empathy that we can gain from this as well uh, to, to really viscerally experience the emotions of another through their expression of art in a way that words just really can't do. Because words are, words are constructs, you know, words are very predefined. And the problem with words is that we all have slightly different interpretations of what the words mean. Let me explain that a little bit. So when I was younger, oh no, it's a little backstory, bear with me. When I was younger, I discovered this book uh, on Hatha Yoga, and it was an old, like, 1950s book, right? And I always remember the first chapter of this book on yoga was absolutely nothing to do with postures or breathing or anything like that. The exercise was to examine something organic, preferably like a fruit, a piece of fruit or a flower or, you know, something that's grown naturally. 
not something that's been constructed, not something that's man-made. So uh, part of this exercise, I must have been about 10, 11 years old. Part of this exercise was to, I, I got an apple. And I had to study this apple for 25, 30 minutes. And as a kid, I'm thinking, like, what the fuck is this? I'm just looking at an apple. Like, how am I going to get anything out of this? But in looking at the apple, in observing the apple, being mindful and present with it, I came to understand that my understanding, my interpretation of what an apple is, is not what all apples are. I say the word apple, and in my mind, an image is conjured up of an approximation of what I think an apple is. And that can be the same for anything. I can say car, I can say chair, I can say vacation, holiday, and all of us will immediately visualize and uh, evoke something that is slightly different than the next person. We all have our own unique constructs around language. Art doesn't do this. Art very much is a vibrant and visceral exposition of emotion. And we draw that in, we interpret that in a very, very different way to language. So I think there's a real value in art as a tool for empathy, in a sense. And of course, this isn't purely limited to observing art, to witnessing it. This is about creating art. There's an incredible expressive catharsis in creation, uh, be that through music, through writing, through, through painting, drawing, whatever it is that you do. There is that existing in the flow state when we fully immerse ourselves in an artistic or creative endeavor, there's an incredible amount of expression that can happen as part of creativity, as part of art. If we're writing, we can expunge some of those feelings. We can use it as kind of an exhaust pipe for the brain. When playing music, we can put emotion into the sound. We can, we can project emotion out through the sound and the music that we're creating, that we're playing. And the same in art, we can f really express what's going on internally through the power of imagery. And there are fundamentally no limits to this. Uh, it's, a, it's an exceptionally powerful endeavor and one that I would highly encourage in anyone listening to this to partake in some art for well-being in a very holistic sense, of course. And on that note of creativity and holistic well-being, here's a word from our sponsor. This episode of The Observing Eye is sponsored by Kafka's Spam. Cold pressed meat coerced into a tin through the power of bleak bureaucracy. Mm. Enjoy hot or cold. Okay, well, yeah, that was clearly me fucking about, but it's my podcast and goddamn it, I'm going to do what I like in it. Enjoy Kafka spam. Spam, not sperm. Spam. Okay, so what was I talking about? Yes, in the research. Of course, I go and do some research around these podcasts. This is not merely me ranting into a microphone for around 10 to 12 minutes. I went on to the WHO and I decided to see what they had uh, to, talk, to say, to talk about, to say around, <coughs> excuse me, around arts and well-being. It seems like a fairly good authority, doesn't it, WHO? Now, they agree with me, Kel Surprise, in that they say that art can help us to emotionally navigate the journey of battling an illness or injury to process difficult emotions in times of emergency and challenging events. They say the creation and enjoyment of art helps promote holistic wellness and can be a motivating factor in recovery including the arts in healthcare delivery has been shown to support positive clinical outcomes for patients whilst also supporting other stakeholders, including healthcare providers, the patient's loved ones, and the wider community. Benefits are seen across several markers, including health promotion, the management of health conditions and illness, and disease prevention. 
I'm not in, they don't really talk about disease prevention so much and how that's uh, you know how art incorporates into that but I think we all know intrinsically that creativity in art uh, and expression is a powerful tool in our kits for improving our well-being so of course I I have a I have a something for you to to consider then between these episodes maybe a piece of homework if you are so inclined and that's to go and get creative I'd love to see to hear what you create as well so as you probably know this episode uh, and this podcast is posted on Substack uh, which is the observing i the letter i dot substack dot com, and there's a comment section associated with this, and you can paste things in there. You can upload things in it. So I want to see some of your creativity. I want you to express yourselves cathartically, holistically, over the next week, and share that. Put it out into the world. Let's see what you can do. Let's see what you're expressing. And let's see what sort of emotions and feelings you can evoke in others through the expression of yourself in art. That is all I have to say on art and well-being. It's a bit brief, but I think I made a point. I hope I made a point, and it wasn't just some ramble into the internet. That's a horrible thought, isn't it? I'm just rambling into the internet, just just shouting into a chasm. Uh, yeah, so, as always, wishing you a wonderful weekend. Get creative this weekend. Do some art. Or go and experience some art. Get out of your head in a way that doesn't involve drugs. And I will see you figuratively in the next episode. Much love. You've been listening to the observing eye. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope that you found it useful. And if you're interested in any more of my writings or work around psychology and philosophy and general day-to-day living, please go and take a look at my substack, which is the observing eye dot substack dot com and that's i as in the letter not i as in each gelatinous organ through which you see take care everybody much love and i'll see you soon